Welcome back to Stasis. Let's explore this rather iced over morgue. Discarded autopsy reports. Hmm, let's see. It's a little bit hard to read, it's really small. Uh, body was discovered in the crew quarter bathrooms. Arms had been cut from wrist to elbow. Ugh. She bled out in seconds. Next of kin will not be notified until the end of her contract. Okay, so she was an employee. Um, yeah, suicide. She killed herself. Apparent suicide. Arms were cut from wrist to elbow. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people kill themselves who uh, work at this place just because of the horrible things that they do once they find out. Oh, whoops. No, come back. Alright, let's see. Part of Project Snow. Okay, so I don't think this is an employee. Yeah, if they're part of one of the projects, it's... Oh, wait. Doctor. Oh, never mind. Doctor. Doctor. Yeah, never mind. They're definitely not a test subject if they're a doctor. Compound fractures along left femur? Hairline fractures along left tibia and fibula. Dislodged clavicle on both sides. Orbital and nasal cavity shattered from penetration of crowbar through skull. Several unknown growths present. Assumption is from external sources. Massive head trauma caused by crowbar. Hmm. Somebody bashed them with a crowbar to death. Who and why? And what about these unknown growths? Was this perhaps the start of the infection or whatever happened? And let's see, Jane Doe. Don't even have a name. Um. Oh, wait, 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 doctor. Doctor, oh, no, that's the doctor doing the, the examination, right? It's gotta be. Yeah, that's not the patient, so never mind. This one, I think... This one, I think, is an employee. This one is probably a test subject. Jane Doe. Body found in pieces very badly... something. Stomach content contained something. Pieces of bone. Uh, cause of death unknown. Body was found something. Pieces badly decomposed. Jesus. Fucking sick. Indistinguishable shapes lie beyond this portal. Yeah, it's completely iced over. <laughs> Should I look in each one? Hmm, hold on. The faint outline of a rusted red metal handle is visible through the frosted over portal. Hmm. Red metal handle. That could be a crowbar or something like that. Maybe. I do need something to dislodge the locks. To get the charging station working for the tram. Yeah, so it's possible I have to open that one, but uh, anyway, I can't do anything yet. I certainly don't have a blowtorch or anything of the sort. Ah, to the furnace. Uh, what did you just do? What... What are you doing, John? The combustion of bodies at high temperature is facilitated by this open furnace unit. It looks like a door, and what is John doing? Like, gets down and stuffs his hand in the swirly thing and then gets back up and doesn't say anything. Hmm, can I dry the towel? I don't know why I'd want to dry the towel, but can I? I guess that's a yes. The wet towel is wound tightly into the cog mechanism. 
Wait, what? Why did I do that? I was trying to dry it. Uh, did that dry it? I don't understand. John, what are you doing? Why did I put the towel there? What's the point of the towel? And John, what are you doing? John, talk to me, John. John. John, John. John, John, John. What's the point of the towel? Uh, high speed drill? No, that won't work. Don't look inside. <clears throat> Is this locked? I mean, it says it's open. I don't. I don't think that'll work. I don't. I don't get it. I don't understand. Why did I put the towel there? It's still wet. It's wound tightly into the cog mechanism. Um, is it gonna freeze? Because it's so cold and it's wet. Will it freeze? What would that help, though? I don't get it. It seems like it's like the door cog thing for the door to swing open? I don't understand. I don't understand what um I'm gonna mess around a bit and I will be right back. I mean, I'm thinking that maybe I need to open the furnace to let the heat out and then like jam the towel in there to keep it open to then thaw this place out, but I don't understand why it's not opening. John just moves his hands around, doesn't say anything, and then stands up. And it's green. Or like bluish, which makes me think that this thing, you know, is open. It's not red, like it's locked. Is it frozen over? Like, I don't get it. this... <laughs> the game's not giving me any feedback as to what's happening here. I'm very, very confused. Okay, I just took a blood sample. Fuck! Oh god, why did I do that? I I was just curious if I'd be able to use any of the items on himself. Um, well, he didn't drill his own head out. And the electronic toe tag, of course, doesn't do anything. I think that'll just break it. But apparently, um, I can take my own blood sample for something. I don't know what that's supposed to be used for, but it's really fucking gross! I don't like needles, and I don't like blood, and I don't like having that in my inventory, so now I really don't ever want to look at my inventory ever again! Yeah. Yeah. I wish I didn't do that. Hmm... I just got an idea. Hmm, let me test it. Electronic toe tag. It's a tag for a dead body. Don't tell me that's what I need to use. Don't tell me. Oh, come on! Warning. Temperature increasing to dangerous level. The duty officer has been noticed. <laughs> the area immediately. Oh, wow. So it is possible to die. <laughs> it is possible to die. <laughs> um, but let me just back up for a second. Here's why I said, oh, come on. It's cold. What is? The mortuary. I think it's supposed to be cold. Here's why that's ridiculous. Okay, I, I figured that out because I thought, okay, you know, maybe this uh, furnace needs, like, everything's electronic here, right? So maybe you need, like, maybe you need to scan the toe tag to get it to open or something like that. However, here's why that's ridiculous. There's no feedback! Where's the feedback? You need feedback, game! Feedback's important. And, um... Look at, I mean, there's... Oh god, there's like three things wrong with this. Alright, the description, for example. It says the combustion of bodies at high temperature is facilitated by this open furnace unit. Open furnace. I mean, I don't know about you, but calling it an open furnace makes me think that the door is open. Maybe it's describing the type of combustion as an open furnace. Is that a type of furnace? An open furnace? I don't know, but it says open, which made me think it's open. Um, plus the fact that it looks blue on the door, which is the same color as other doors when they're unlocked. That makes me think it's not locked, because locked doors are red, as they have been in the past in this game. 
so it's blue, which makes me think it's open. And the third problem is that when you go to use it, John doesn't say a damn thing. He just waves his hand around like he's trying to cast a magic spell, and then stands up. Like, could I have some feedback, please? That would be great, thank you. Okay, so yeah, I do need to open the furnace to melt the place, but um, I need to do that without melting my own body. Mm. Wait, why did why did that melt my body? Like, how do people put bodies inside of here if you die as soon as you open the furnace? Uh. All right. Well, I I think I had the wet, dirty towel in there. I don't know if that helped or hurt. Let's try doing it without the towel. I can't imagine that would help, but let's try it. Okay, so it just closes right away. Um, it looks like I do have an opportunity to do stuff, too. Like, I actually had my mouse for a second there. Um, hmm. So what am I supposed to do here? I can jam the towel in now, but I could also jam it in later. Uh, let's just jam it in now, I guess. And then try to run? I'm gonna try to run. Or maybe I should... No, just try to run. What's up? Go ahead and wait a couple seconds. We good? Nice and smoky. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can only imagine what this must smell like. Sealed? Good. Let's keep it that way. Cold, hard mortuary slab. Uh... Is it still cold? I guess, it, yeah, it probably would still be cold. I think it's just the outside that's been burned. Everything inside is probably still cold. <laughs> so if you don't read the autopsy reports before you do that, they get, uh... Burned away. Turned to ash. Oh my god, it is a crowbar. It's the crowbar of the person who had died by the crowbar, being used to bash them in the head. It's in the freaking cadaver's head. <sighs> oh god. I can hear you're taking strain. But keep your eyes on the end goal. Your family. We need you. Thank god I reloaded my save game so I don't have the blood-filled syringe in my inventory anymore. An unbearable stench rises from the rotting corpse. The bones make a rough sketch of the human form. Let's go. Alright, so we can use this crowbar to probably break the locks holding the fuse boxes closed, which then will allow me to get the charging station working, which will allow me to take the tram. So once I get this tram working, where do I go? Your best bet is to find medical access terminal. Medical wing is on that tram line, so it should be a quick ride. Thank you, Tia. And, um, I'm sorry about your friend. Just... be safe. 
Yeah, unfortunately this game is falling into the trap a little bit of hard to find hotspots. And just like a lack of feedback as to what you're actually supposed to do. Uh, like, you know, what objects to use on what. Like, I took the electronic toe tag from the body for what reason? Why did I take it in the first place? There was really no reason to take it. And then I needed to use it in a place where I didn't even know the thing was locked. Because there was no feedback that said it was locked. Falling into that trap a little bit. Um, I hope it doesn't get any worse. Damn, look at him go at it. Just bashes it open. Just a good... Whack. Okay. So I think I probably bridged the gap between the connections with my hand, and then we should be good to go. see anything I can press, but I think I'm missing the connection here, right? So I need a backup. Which, maybe I can grab from over, over here. Oh, I can actually take that. Cool. Uh, I can't click on my inventory. Hmm? What the? Uh. Okay, is it working now? <laughs> what? Do I just use it here? Oh, oh. Okay? What? <sighs> Just after talking about how I hope this game doesn't fall into having more bizarre interactions and lack of feedback. You can only use- you, what? You can't use the fuse in the screen where you need to put the fuse on. You have to- I can't even open my inventory here. You have to go back out of the screen and then open your inventory and use it from here. Oh, okay. Uh, Alright, cool. Can I charge it now? Please, take me to the next station. I hope the next station is Good Puzzle Plaza. Okay, the tram's powered. I see it. Give me a second. I'm setting your destination to the medical wing. That's not good, Puzzle Plaza. Hmm. So I don't actually need to switch tram lines, right? I don't think so. Could I switch tram lines if I wanted to? Oh wait, this is line out of order for tram line one, so I guess not. Yeah, that's why it's all red. I get to operate this thing. Tram light switch, no need. Emergency stop, and what is this? Is this power? Hmm. What's wrong? Oh, wait, is the charging thing still connected? It is, isn't it? I probably need to disconnect that. How do I do that? I don't see any buttons to do that. Uh, okay. Do I need to just take this? 
Tram line breaker. Oh, I guess I need to put the power back in the line. Oh, of course I can't do that from the screen. Wait, so am I just going to leave the charging thing connected to, th to the tram? That's not going to be an issue? Isn't it keeping it there? I don't know. Screw it. Let's go. I am going to smash this. <clears throat> so then, do I have to disconnect the tram charger? I feel like I should. Hold on. Destination set. Hmm? I need to switch tram lines, but I chose the switch tram line button on the tram and it didn't do anything. And the charger still could- what? Please get me out of here. Can I go now? So it seems we have a crazy doctor on our hands. An evil scientist. John? John? Are you okay? I've lost the tram signal! Uh, what the hell happened? barely make you out. Are you hurt? No. I think I'm okay. I'm fine. I need to get out of this tram. It's okay. I think I can make the jump. Jump! Um. Mm, I'm gonna save the game first, just in case I, uh, like, fall down and break my legs or something. 
Anything do I have? Do I have anything that could help? Crowbar? No, that's not gonna help. Tram's crash has left a menagerie of debris in its wake. Concrete, strips of metal, power lines, and a further mangled mess. Mm, I guess there's nothing I can do but this. Alright, let's just jump down not on the debris. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Shit, that was close. John, are you okay? I'm... I'm fine. <laughs> you're, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. I... Hello? Tia? Come in. Radio's not working. Okay, get it together. First things first. Where the hell am I? Yeah, so the train was dangling down, so I guess I've gone down one floor. An oily mixture runs in rivulets down the industrial prefab walls. The tram has reached its last stop on the line. The sound of his unplanned parking procedure still rings in your head. Nylon emergency tape. Hmm. Hmm. I could use this. This place looks like it's under construction or something. It's really dirty. Toolbox. Oh, shit. Where the hell am I gonna find the key in this mess? Hmm, do I actually need a key? I've got a drill and a crowbar. Let's try both. <sighs> oh, this ain't working. Damn. Alright, try the drill. These don't go well together. Never mind. Ooh, hello. Albert Olson, engineer. Kane certainly spared no expense on the engineering decks. More often than not, the air conditioning breaks faster than maintenance can come back to fix it. The walk to the restrooms can exceed ten minutes on a good day. It's of no consequence. With a lush retirement package Kane has prepared for me, I'd happily work in a cardboard box lined with thumbtacks for the rest of my career. I'm scheduled to receive my new heart and lungs within the next few months, at which point I may finally retire to join my wife, Rosalind, in Chicago. Until then, cigarettes and foods of the highest saturated fat content will continue to carry me through the day. Hmm. I wonder if that's like a perk of working for the company. You get free, uh, you get free organs from the products. This evening I was surveying the equipment on the decks when I noticed something rather unusual. A very fine layer of some sort of fungal substance is beginning to settle on the machinery. It's even found its way into the dials and monitors. They look filthy on the inside. Given the conditions around here, though, the growth of mold on any surface, surface should come as no surprise. But it seems to be interfering directly with the performance of the Groom Lake, so it's of some urgency that it's taken care of. I reported it to maintenance. Hopefully they'll be quick in cleaning it up. Hmm, so that is the start of the infection, some sort of fungal substance. But where did it come from? Kane Corporation must be pleased with my performance so far. I woke up to a promotion. I'm in charge of the construction of new cloning vats, effective immediately. 
I have little time to elaborate. This job is important and urgent, I believe. I never anticipated that the project would be on such a huge scale. Clones will be created in mass quantities, utilizing several megavats fitted with special equipment and enrichment liquid to accelerate the growth process. I must enhance the rate at which we'll be creating clone batches. They've invented a method of manufacturing human beings faster than humans can biologically. Project Seed insists that the cloning vats are put to use immediately, despite the fact that they're far from complete. The vats can certainly sustain the cloning process, but some safety precautions are lacking. Like, the holding chambers for research clones have no power routed to them. So the electronic locks are useless. The walkways above the vats are still only temporary. O'Sullivan fell over the guardrail and into a vat yesterday. Had it not been filled with sanitizing solution, we would have lost him. Okay, so hold on, they're making clones. I'm not a, I'm not a clone, am I, John? I don't think so. I mean, it said my name and it said that I had been, you know, taken. Taken from another ship. I don't think I'm a clone. But then again, I guess every clone would have the same memories, right? I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. The clones appear to operate entirely on instinct. One of the complete human clones in Vat Theta bit a good chunk out of Miss Keen's ear during feeding time. Bleh. Oh. No, I don't think I'm a clone. I think it's the clones that perhaps had uh, turned into the monsters. Bit a good chunk out of Miss Keen's ear during feeding time. Huh. Three of the completed research clones tore their holding chamber's analog locks last night over in the labs. Uh, tore through, rather. They found Peters bent over backwards, with his head between his knees. He's not going to be walking again anytime soon. Maintenance will be fixing the electronic locks this evening. O'Sullivan has asked to be assigned to a different project. O'Sullivan's request was denied. Keen, however, has been transferred to Project Seed. I've been stealthily increasing the portions of food to Elon's batch in Vat 449. Although they've... Although they're just hearts and lungs, I can't help but feel an attachment. Additionally, we've noticed a mass of organic matter that has sprouted a tail and swims around aimlessly. O'Sullivan wants to name it after his mother-in-law. Who in their right mind names a defective clone? Oh my god. Alright, yeah, so they're just growing the clones just for their organs. But that's not the oh my god part. I mean, that's already pretty fucked up, but... <laughs> a mass of organic matter that has sprouted a tail and swims around aimlessly. Jesus! Samantha. The impossible human fish monstrosity crushed Elon with her thrashing as she was being removed from her vat. Most of the other clones in the batch have similar deformities. None of them actually grew into heart and lung tissue as they were meant to do. In fact, the results thus far are truly horrifying. Everyone has been acting strangely lately. O'Sullivan didn't show up this week, leaving me to tend to the vats by myself. I don't understand why that's being permitted, but management would have most certainly dragged him down here by the cheeks, if there was no legitimate justification. Speaking of cheeks, one of the complete human clones took a chunk out of mine when I was escorting it to the research labs. Okay, with so many incidents back to back, they need better security, my god. The Groom Lake has been completely locked down. A massive tremor shook and collapsed the walkways over the cloning vats. I'm trapped. I can't access the bulkhead. If this lockdown is anything like I heard the last one was, it should be over soon enough. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Two packs of cigarettes will only last for so long. 
I can hear screams of terror through the ceiling. They echo. Each reverberation is a reminder that I'm damn fortunate to be down here and not up there. Although, my supplies are running out. I sincerely hope that I don't have to swim for it. If the clones don't get me, cardiac arrest from the aerobic exercise will. I'm going to attempt to swim across Vat Theta. I'll reach the other side and try to get myself to the next level of the ship. Clones have been vi violently floundering in the growth liquid. Given what they did to Peters, I might not see the other side of this vat. The remainder of this entry is to be delivered to my wife. Rosalind. I can only hope that I have the opportunity to deliver this to you myself. If not, I must attempt to express with words what I have longed to convey physically. Should I die before I can get off this vessel, every moment of my life, every cumulative experience that has influenced my being, will scream your name, begging the reality of inevitable death to spare me, if only to touch you once more. I apologize for and regret every second I have spent away from you. Until that moment we first met, my heart was a void, lacking the fierce fires of passion that you have bestowed within. No matter the outcome of my escape, I will be long dead before they are extinguished. For an eternity after I have perished, you will live on. Your name will ring out through the galaxy, a testament to all of existence that there can never exist a love greater than what I have for you. Your love is my life. As such, I am immortal. Well, I think we know what happened to Albert. That was the final entry. We left in 2148, three years ago. These bastards had us here for three years. Three years. And, uh, what, what was her name? Tia? Tia said that it's only been, what, like three months? So that means he must have been kept... Or they must have been kept... Him and his family must have been kept in stasis. They must have been in stasis for a while before being intercepted, I guess, and then also kept in stasis for quite a while before the outbreak. Some sort of... Oh, I'm not sure what to call it. Jesus Christ, this is one of the growth vats. And that might be Albert's body right there. It seems to have, like, coagulated. It looks like you can just walk over the surface. I mean, the body is on the surface. Jesus. Uh, this construction light is off. I'd really like to get some more light in here. Although, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I want to see the things that I'm staring at more clearly. I don't think I do. God, look at it. Something's moving in there. It's alive. Horrific, partially grown, cloned, like deformed clones. This is sick. A generator rig hums softly. Oh, it's running. Good. Oh, it still has fuel in it. So luck at last. Yeah, a little bit of light. Doesn't really help anything at the moment, though. Let's see, so I've got construction tape crowbar. 
crosswalk that once spanned this vat has collapsed and is now covered by a rippling lagoon of flesh. The marks on the engineer's corpse leave little doubt that parts of the body have been eaten, though it's not clear whether consumption occurred before or after death. Yeah, that's Albert's body. Hi! Jesus. Let's not do that. Those noises. They must be tortured. Half-formed clones? They don't grow right. They, that must be incredibly painful. Bloody handprints. A long smear from a pair of bloody handprints streaked downward into the vats, as if someone were dragged into the bubbling morass. That was Albert. of this. Look at all these vats. Look at the things growing in them. What is that? It looks like brain tissue or something. Is there anything I can do with any of the things here? I don't think so. All I can do is look. Alright, so I think I need Albert's body. I think I need his key or something. Could the nylon emergency tape perhaps be used to get him? Could I maybe, I don't know, connect it to the crowbar? This oh. should be useful. <laughs> well, my idea actually worked. I wasn't expecting that. Can we use that to uh, bring the body to me? Ew! I don't, I don't know how that crowbar was so sharp that it like stuck in the body or something, because I saw a big blood squirt, but uh, I'll take it. Rest. Rest in peace. Uh, yeah, given that he just fell into the growing vat, I don't know if he will rest in peace. He might just grow into something horrific. I don't know. Toolbox keys. Alright. Can I take this thing back apart? I don't think this will fit. Nah, I guess not. Jumper cable. I can use that for... Hmm. The other light, perhaps? This goes on here. Mm-hmm. Oh, electricity pole. The electricity pole serves the vital function of keeping high-voltage electrical cables away from the liquid-filled vats. Oh. So am I about to, like, shock the whole vat to kill what's growing inside or something? I thought that was too easy. Yeah, that seems way too easy. Uh, drill? There we go. Alright, let's push you over. Come on. Push, John, push. No? Uh, what about this? There we go. Okay, now let's see what I can do.
Okay, here we go. I'm guessing the sounds that they're going to make as they are shocked to death are going to be less pleasant than usual, and they already sound unpleasant. I kind of want to give it another shock, just to be sure, you know? I guess it doesn't work anymore. Alright, are we good? Ooh. Oh. That doesn't look like water anymore. <laughs> that is disgusting. Tia, so, yeah, can you hear me? I'm working on getting out of here. I can see a light far above me. I think it's a way out. God, I hope so. Spider webs of cracks radiate outward from several damaged sections of this display panel. No power runs through the terminal. It's busted. Broken ladder rests on its side like a wounded beast. Hmm, so I think if I want to get out by going above, I guess I need to get to this ladder. But of course the bottom's broken. Lovely. Crossbeam runs between the support columns. Hmm, can't quite reach it. So I guess I need, like, something to stand on, maybe. VAT-13 computer terminal. The metal stamp on this terminal indicates that it controls VAT-13. A plastic tiki doll stands at the back of the keyboard. Its skirt swaying back and forth in a silent... Uh... Luau? I think that's pronounced Luau. Alright, let's check these. Of course they're gonna have reports about the wonderful things that have been growing inside. Uh... Standard growth enhancement agents, 150% concentration, plus additional growth hormones obtained from Project Seed. Incomplete human clones, intended for harvest of pulmonary and coronary tissue. Products, products, developing at 800% acceleration from the selected control group. However, several anomalies have occurred. Anomaly example, a tissue mass has developed into a tail. Uh, a tail of sorts. It circles the vat, using the aforementioned tail to propel itself. Mass with tail appendage has been assigned a name, Samantha. Despite the previous belief that the circling, circling behavior was a product of instinct, it is now clear that it has been surveying the vat's electronic safety net and searching for vulnerabilities. Samantha has been extracted and moved to security for temporary storage. She thrashed violently upon removal, damaging equipment and other specimens. Why would you transport her? Why wouldn't you just kill her? Look at this little note here. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was black as coal. When Mary went to bed one night, it ate her fucking soul. <laughs> Someone had a grim sense of humor. Then again, I think, uh, who wouldn't working in a place like this? Alright, standard agents, complete human clones intended for immediate testing. Subject appears to develop bone and tendon structure prior to vital organs. 
but following nervous system development. Growth of muscle has begun to progress. One specimen ceased to grow and was confirmed dead. Upon autopsy, three extra vertebrae were discovered, as well as two ribs. However, only a few teeth were found deep within the mandible. Growth of all specimens has accelerated. Any given clone measures just under seven feet and possesses the auxiliary ribs and vertebrae observed in the failed subject. So, all the clones were turning into giants, basically. All vital organs are present and appear to be performing normally. Despite the abnormal rib and spinal developments, the clones seem to be perfectly functional and fully matured. One, however, was rendered blind as a result of improper sph uh, sphenoid development. I feel like I'm gonna get to meet these creatures. Like, the blind giant or something. Enriched with additional amino acids, 300% concentration. Enhanced human clones, intended for immediate research. Specimens began to move about the vat immediately during the embryonic phase. <laughs> Jesus, moving around during the embryonic phase, I'm pretty sure nothing is supposed to move during the embryonic phase. All subjects developing at nearly 500% acceleration. Effective growth agent concentration on subject development ruled parabolic rather than linear. Hmm. Multiple subjects have combined to form a larger mass of anthropoid limbs and organs. It surfaced and was then ruled deceased. It appeared to be composed of approximately 12 human-like bodies, all roughly infant-sized batch has been active for 96 hours. Development of other subjects remains regular. Oh my fucking god. Twelve human-like infants forming a mass of limbs and organs. Jesus. Look at all this crap. In the dim light, your eyes can make out more discernible shapes in the meaty clumps below. The arc of an arm, a head's partial dome, and the spinal curve of a body in the fetal position. I think I've seen enough. I can probably use this to climb up. Ah, oh my god. This is so big. I hate this damn place. Albert did say he was amazed at the scale of the operation. No kidding. This is massive. How many clones did they need? Keep talking? Hmm, I guess she couldn't hear me. There's so much graffiti everywhere. Look at all of it. Hmm. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm gonna figure out where in the heck I am.